everyone, this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio here today with a book flip. This is a book that I've been working on for about six weeks now. Um, I do a little bit to it every day. And when I'm not working on it physically, I'm thinking about what the next thing is I need to do to it. So this will be a three-part video because there are three signatures in the book. And I filmed this once already and the silly thing was an hour long and I, I just can't do it. Nobody's going to sit there and listen to me yammer on for an hour at once, and who has that kind of time anyway? So I'm going to do it in three parts. They'll probably be 30 minutes or less. I had one, the first one was 28 minutes, second one was 22, and the last one was 15. So there you go. All right, so I got the husband to go to Lowe's, so he's gone. The dog's are asleep on the couch, and then the phone rings. <laughs> All right, so let's try this again. This is my fourth time. So, this book is about things that I like to look at, things that I'm interested in, um, in no particular order of likeness. So, each signature has a piece of deli paper that is the, that's all tea or coffee dyed. That's all what's inside here, some kind of dyed paper. So, this is wrapped around this whole signature. Where is it end? Right here, this is the first signature, and it has the paper, and then there's one for the second one. So uh, I took napkins that I like, and I don't use a lot of napkins, even though I have a big, huge basket full of them. I just don't think to use them. So this was a villa, a street picture of a, a villa's. It looked like it's Italian or French, definitely not American. Uh, and I really liked it. So I cut a portion of it and put it on here. So I tried to make each one of the sets of pages that face each other kind of the same color, same theme. You'll see it as I go. So I'm starting with an orange and yellow sort of theme. Then I put this napkin was the last thing to go in on this signature, which has been finished a little while. A little while. I like this rooster. He's orange, he fits in. This is a, a stamp. I think this is a rubber stamp that I did. And it was orange. It got cut out and glued on the, on the page. This is a pocket. And I sewed all the pages, either they're zigzag or they're eight stitches to an inch on every page in this book. Thankfully, I thought about sewing them before I put it together. <laughs> So, um, Margell from Shelly Studio asked me what I do with my scraps. So here's an example of what I do with my scraps. This is an offcut from making this book because these pages were a little too large to fit in the book. So I took the offcut and I stenciled using Carla's stencils from What If NC, the little ATC stencils. And this is what I did, and then I glued it on top of the pocket. I did rick rack, rick rack. I did um, do the sewing around the edge of this after I did the stencil. All right, this is a leftover piece of paper of Japanese or Chinese writing paper. It came in a tablet, and it was a gift from my friend Peg Robinson in some Happy Mail. So I, you, you'll see where the other part of it is later on. But the bottom part of it was just plain paper, and I tea dyed it. Then I had a, a nice thick strip that was left over, and I made a pocket out of it. Then I used Carla stencils, the ATC Ivy stencil, on it. And this is how I use some of my scraps. I printed off a picture from Flickr from the Commons. You will see that in Susan Taylor Brown's video. And I made a little notepad out of it. This is leftover cardstock. This is a picture I printed off on coffee dyed paper. This is coffee and tea dyed paper. And if you remember, um, I was talking about paper that had the recipes on the back of it. That's what this stuff is. So you know this is leftover paper. And I just took this. I made a little envelope out of it. Slipped that in the side there. And that goes inside here. So this one, I found this saying, you are my sunshine. I like to sing that to my dog every night when we go to bed because it annoys him and then he licks my face. <laughs> so um, I had all these 
stamps and I thought, you know what, I'm, I'm going to do a whole page dedicated and that's what I'm going to put on my, my page. So I did that. Oranges and yellows. This is a tab. Now, the tabs were an afterthought, so I tried to match most of the tabs to the theme on the page. So these are two little sunshines that are drawn or stamped on here and then colored in orange. And this is leftover orange paper. This is leftover orange cords, um, cardstock. This is all leftover stuff from something else. I learned how to crochet and knit as a child. My grandmother, my father's mother, my paternal grandmother um, was very diligent in teaching me how to knit and to crochet and I love it and to this day I still love doing it. So I looked up on uh, for vintage pictures of crocheting and knitting and sewing type stuff and that's what this page is dedicated to. This is a old, an antique knitting machine which I didn't know existed. I just think it's very clever. Here's the hand crank and that wheel around there turns it. It's just great. I used to have a pair of these stork scissors somewhere around here. I might still have them in my um, knitting bag. All right, so I only had a limited amount of these. I can only find a limited amount. So this page, I'd already, let me show this. I learned how to make the scrap envelope using the zigzag stitch from Cory Dahman. So I took leftover pieces of scrapbook paper, zigzagged them into a square, then took the envelope board and cut the square down into envelope size measurements and made an envelope. It was that simple. I tried doing something on the other side of the paper and it bled through here, so I had these three suns that I was going to use on the other paper and ended up using the orange stuff. These are backed in leftover black cardstock and I decided I wanted to use them. So the biggest one is glued on here to cover up <laughs> the bleed through from the other side. So I decided to just to put these in the back of this. This is made out of leftover tea dyed paper, leftover brown cord, uh, cardstock. This is printed off of, I think this might be paper I printed off of the Commons for coffee because this is a roasted coffee bag or coffee tin. And then I just used uh, washi tape. This is a Cory method of sewing a book, so the profile is very thin, not bulky. I did one of these in the black book that I showed, the black idea book and the brown idea book. Um, so what I did that bled through is I took a, a rubber stamp that I had that looked like coffee blotches, and I dipped it in ink and stamped it all on there. And that's what bled through that's underneath here. And I wanted to cover it up. So the way I did it covered up on this side was I printed off um, advertisements for ink wells and cut out the ink, refill ink bottles and used those to cover up what bled through from trying to make it look like coffee stains or ink stains. I like um, ink pens, fountain pens. My brother collects them, so... I've learned to look for them everywhere I go, maybe to give as a gift for Christmas. My husband and I did a craft show one time when we lived in Virginia Beach, and there was a man there who made his own pens, and I, brought, I bought my brother one of the pens for him to use and gave it to him as a gift for Christmas one year. No theme on the tab. I like green, and I like plants, and that's what this is all about. This is jelly printed paper that I had in the drawer. Um, I do a lot of jelly prints that are 5x7 because I can get two of them on the 85 by 11 and then just cut off the white around it and that's what this is. I found images of leaves and plants and printed those off on the uh, coffee and tea dyed paper then cut them out. I use walnut stain, ink around the edges and that's it. This is leftovers from something else and I use a zigzag. When I have tiny strips of paper, what I do is I just feed them through the machine one at a time and zigzag them through the machine. They're still attached to each other from the thread, from going from paper to paper. Then later on, I just cut them apart. And that's what this is. And there's the other half of it right there. So for my tab, I took leftover green cardstock and uh, 
shrunk down a fern or a, a, a leaf I saw that was vent out of a vintage uh, biology book and or a botanical book and made it the theme for the tab. So I know what's on this page are leaves. All of these wine labels came from um, the vintage stuff off of the commons. I don't know how vintage they are. But I thought they were beautiful. And I had a napkin, again, that looked like an Italian villa. And it looks like these could be vineyards down here. So I thought, this is perfect. I will print all these off. I want colored. Well, actually, I wanted black and white, but I couldn't find any. So I found the color ones. And I used them. And for my tab, it's a wine glass in front of grapes. And I did do four pages of the labels because I just thought they were fabulous. I really like them. Next, um, as I'm scrolling through looking for other things, I noticed that they were blue um, flowers. And I thought, okay, well, I have blue paper in here, so why not pair the blue flowers up with the blue paper? So this is um, jelly prints. Some uh, Peg Robinson gifted me this ribbon. I put this on here. I made little tags a while back to put into the brown idea book and the blue I the brown idea book and decided not to use it. So it goes right here. This was made during iCAD that I featured on my Instagram page. I painted this. I painted this too. And instead of using a tab, I used one of these, a tag that I had with this, and decided to use that for my tab for the page. It has nothing to do with the rest of it. The only thing it has in common is it's a shade of blue. <laughs> and since there is blue on both sides of that paper, I decided to continue trying to incorporate blue in here. This is a Monet uh, picture out of a magazine. This blue striped um, washi tape I got from Zurich, Switzerland in a, in a package for um, from Allie from Three Dotted Penguins. I won a contest that she had on there to guess how many fish stamps she had. I guessed 105, and I won. And she sent me some beautiful um, print, printed postcards. And, and then she gave me one print that I could frame. And I had to put this in here. I mean, how could I not? This is scraps that were sewn and cut apart, like I said on another page. Another jelly print. This is just printed off of the commons. I had already put this in here and put the napkin on here. This is one of the most common napkins. There are out everywhere. You can get it at Dollar Tree. You can get them at Tuesday morning. I mean, they're everywhere. And I really like the irises, and it was blue, and I had the blue iris here, so that's that. All right, so because the next thing had butterflies incorporated in it, I decided to go ahead and cut a butterfly out and put it on this page because that will introduce to this. And then I put another butterfly on this side. This is paper that I drew zinnias on, and then I colored them. I got a burlap tablet from Peg Robinson and peeled the cardboard off of it and then shredded, you know, pulled the strings off of this to use the burlap. I found another butterfly that I had printed off for this. He was part of this amount that I printed off my sheet and I couldn't waste him so I just glued him on a leftover piece of cardstock, sewed around it, and then glued it on here. This has magnets on the envelope. Nothing drives me crazier than envelopes that don't shut, so I put magnets on it. Of course, it's empty. <laughs> All right, so this page was dedicated to butterflies, and I tried to make them as monochromatic kind of as possible. And my tab is of a butterfly. These almost look like leather. This is just a shade of brown cardstock and, that I cut up. Now, I did have a whole sheet of that and cut that so I could put all these butterflies on here, sewed around them, did the walnut stain. And every time I look at them, I want to rub them because they remind me of, like, suede leather. All right, more with the green leaves and brown, brown, brown leaves. 
the theme on this page is basically leaves, green and brown. So for my tab, I have a leaf. This one was red orange. These are roses and I had a whole, um, I printed off, I think it was almost an eight and a half by 11 size sheet of this one uh, print off of the commons. And then I used the sawtooth zigzag around it. I used the walnut stain distress ink and glued it on here. This is, um, what is this? This is something that came out of a magazine. The butterfly came from the commons. This is deli paper. And the other side is blue theme and blue flowers. This is a napkin. I love this napkin. I love the way it looks. I like co the colors. I like the composition. There's nothing I don't like about this napkin. So I printed off blue flowers that I found on the commons and my tab is a very small picture that, you know, it was a size like this that I made small and skinny so I could fit it on a tab. All these tabs are leftover cardstock that I have put away. This is the diamond pattern ATC paper that I did um, from What If NC. And then um, I sewed around it and then just glued it on there for a side pocket. I printed these from the common. These are uh, stock certificates. And I thought they were very interesting and they were vintage looking. And so I put them in here. While I was looking for something else, I found a sheet that had these, I guess it was in a newspaper advertising all the things the store had. So it was on one sheet, so I took the sheet, printed it off on coffee dyed paper, and then I cut each one of the little um, advertisements out, glued those on top of jelly print paper that I had that was blue so I could kind of continue the blue onto the next page. There's no tab for this, but I had this brown pocket uh, paper clip and I learned this from Corey Dahman and so I decided that I would use this instead of a tab for this one. If I can get it back on there, here it is. It's... And you can slide stamps or little notebooks, very small things in here. So I use that kind of for my tab. All right, the next one is driven by the butterfly. I made this pocket out of book text, inked it, glued it on here, put this iCAD motivated tag in it. That's the napkin. And nothing else was on here. And I thought, well, how am I going to, this is all yellow orangey theme. What am I going to do? So I took, again, the spiral stencil from What If NC, did it on a strip of leftover coffee dyed paper, did the sawtooth zigzag sewing machine on here, and glued it on the end of the page. And that helped to bring the orange and yellow theme stuff together. This is coffee dyed paper. This is a three pocket um, stacked three stacked pockets. This was a little symbol off of something. And I just took a water, um, what do you call it, a brush pen, a water color brush pen and colored it in. It was black and white, but I colored it in. So it would kind of run the theme over. This is another one of those um, paper clips. I just put it on here because of yellow. This was in my uh, stash for tags and it was brown and yellow. This is leftovers. This is deli paper and off cut. These are off cuts of tea dyed paper and, and just it's all leftovers. And then I just sewed, took the paper, folded it over, sewed the top and then there's a little notepad. This is another one of the tags I did for iCAD this year and it fit in with the color. I love fruits and vegetables. I'm a retired um, personal chef. I have a culinary arts degree and I like, I really like these pictures of fruits and vegetables that are vintage. Um, I collect coffee pots and pitchers, P-I-T-C-H-E-R-S's, of fruits and vegetables. I have about 50, 
I don't collect them anymore. Please don't send anything. Um, and they're all over my kitchen cabinets and on war and the shelf. And so I'm just continuing what I like, what interests me. So for the tab on this one, it is a chili pepper, a long chili pepper. I th it's this one right here. And some of these are duplicated on other pages because I really like them. Like you will see these and the carrot somewhere else again and possibly this. Next is green. I glued this on here before I started filling all the vintage stuff in. I did at least ink around it. This is from iCAD and I decided since it was green it needed a little accent. There's that. A journaling card. Then Peg Robinson sent me this print. I think this is hers. And I liked it so much and I used it for something else. I could not bear to rip this up any smaller or let anything happen to it. So in it goes here because I want to save it for posterity's sake. She also sent me a piece of deli paper that had this beautiful, beautiful leaf printed on it. So I couldn't cut it up. So I cut off the other half of the deli paper and glued it right on here. So it continued on with the green. I love the way this looks. That's beautiful. Autumn leaves. Love autumn leaves. This is a napkin where when you unfold the napkin, there's four different leaves. So here they are, these two. And then I took the other two panels that belong to this and just took the leaves off of there. You know, I took the brown off of it and all the background and just glued them on here. This is from a magazine and it says the word beautiful and I think it's right. I did not put anything here on the tab. This is my homage to my coffee. These are vintage coffee cans and coffee tins. I, I just, I thought these are so clever. Um, this has a pocket on it. I just glued these on here because this was glued on here before I did the coffee theme. So they really don't go with the coffee stuff. Then I had a napkin that had coffee stuff on it. So I just took a strip of it and glued it on here. This, again, is from a coffee, a vintage coffee picture off of the Commons. Then I took offcuts from other stuff, sewed them in the book using the Cory Daman method. So the profile is very skinny for the little book. And just put it in here with a heart paper clip to hold it in there because sometimes it kind of wiggles around. So I put that on there. This is it. This is it spread out. This is what this is what um, spurred the rest of the page is this right here. Then I found these spoons. I had this little, I don't know if I got this off the internet or if I have a stamp that goes with it. These are stencils. And there's a picture of an old antique coffee grinder. I had to put this in here. And then my tab is an, a miniaturized coffee can. Uh, I don't think it's, is it any? Yeah, it's this one right here that I made very small so I could use it as a tab for the page. The only thing about doing a tab like this is that it's hard to open it. It catches on the back page, so you have to move this before you open it. This is about bees. I love honey, and I love local honey. I try to always buy local honey to support the bee trade. Sorry, everyone, but the video camera shut itself off. It was full, <laughs> so I had to empty it out. While I was doing that, I went and made myself a cucumber salad for dinner. All right, so this page is all about the bees. As I was saying before I got cut off by the camera, that I try to support local beehive keepers because um, I think it's really important to help the economy where you live. We live in a town where there's 2,000 people, and... I appreciate the lady that comes, or I know, is it a lady? I can't remember. It's a man or a woman who comes to the farmer's market and sells their local honey. I'd rather buy that than what's in the grocery store. If I run out, I will use what's in the grocery store. But I look on the back of it to make sure it's not a blend from China or some other country, that it's 100% pure USA honey. Sometimes I'll find giant bottles that say USA, 100% Texas honey on it, and I will buy that. Okay, so this is part of a, I think it's a newsletter or some kind of a journal for beekeepers. And this is called the American Bee Journal. 
It said, Oldest B Paper, established in 1861. Here is their the top part to their paper. This I cut this off of a printed sheet and kept this so I could see all the bees. These are the categories in the Bee Journal. Among our exchanges, reports and experiences, questions and answers, editorial comment, the afterthought, and this says re reports and experiences. That's just two versions of the same thing here. Got these all off of the um, off of the commons. This right here is a copy of this, but I just cut off the bottom part of it so it was long and skinny and it would make a great tab for the B page. Next are chickens. I love chickens. I don't own any, probably never will, but I love looking at my neighbor's chickens. She has a whole bunch of exotic chickens. She sells eggs and she also sells the fertilized eggs to people wanting um, silkies and all these exotic chickens that she has. I found this that says poultry and made sure I had a copy of it to use for my tab. Then I found this advertisement for chili powder, which was like a whole page. So I thought, okay, well that'll take up space. So I don't have to think about anything too hard to make it work. So I took newsprint or a new uh, book print that was tea dyed. Then I glued um, a jelly print over that. Then I glued the chili ad on top of this. This bottle here, I ran off two copies of this. So this is part of the original ad. Then I cut the rest of the ad away and all I wanted was just this duplicated bottle to go down here because there was too much at the top. So this helped extend the look of the ad all the way down to the bottom. And then I have hydrangeas. This is from a hydrangea napkin that I really like. And I, um, I also took it and put it on the back side. Okay, so we are finished with the first signature. The second signature will be the next video in the series. Like I said, it'll be a three-part video because there are three signatures. Thanks, everybody, for watching the first signature. Please come back to watch the second and third signatures. I think you'll like them. Thanks, everybody.